The following video is part of a series aimed to show you how different parts of this environment were created. We're gonna cover the flags now, 100% made inside Unreal Engine and animated with physics. So let's get started. Alright guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how I made these flags here. They are 100% made inside Unreal Engine and I thought it was a very interesting workflow so I wanna share it with you. All these flags use the same workflow so let's get into it. Uh, first, let's, let's go to a new level because I don't wanna work in this level, it's a little bit heavy for my computer. Let's just go to basic. Um, well, let's create the base of the flag first. This is not a... There are many, multiple ways to doing this. If your flag is like a rectangle, maybe you can use a rectangle like this. If your flag is like a triangle, you can use the extrude polygon. You can put the extrude mode on flat. By default, it's interactive. You just put it on flat. Uh, disable snapping and just click here. And there you go. Now you have your flag. Now, by default, this is not really... Let's just admit this is not the best shape. So we're going to add some variation here. The, we we want to we wanna add like a break the silhouette just like this so that it looks really cool. Maybe up some holes and, you know, things like that. So the way we're going to do that is it's just really simple, to be honest. Uh, hold on a second. There you go. It's, it's going to be very simple. We're going to create a box. Okay. And we're going to add some geometry into this. So we're going to go to mesh, remesh. Let's just not add too many polygons. Let's just put 100, just like that. And the next thing you want to do is to model, uh, go to deform, displace. And by default, this will be four. I'm going to put one. Uh, I'm going to put zero, actually, because I, I only want to get the the silhouette. As you can see, it's, a, it's kind of working already. So I'm just going to put it here. And I'm just going to move this here. And I'm going to do something like this. There you go. All right. So as soon as you do that, you can click here. And before we do the Boolean, we're going to go to also Mesh, Remesh. Uh, let's put uh, like 1000 here. Or maybe that's too much. Maybe 500 looks like a, like a good number. And we're going to put this in on the edge. And then we're going to click this one click this one and then we're gonna go to to model and go to boolean here so as you do the boolean you will see that you are breaking the silhouette just a little bit you can move it if, if you want uh, for me that's more than enough first things first i'm gonna uh, change the output type i'm gonna put it to not the output type sorry uh, right to the first input object which means it will update the original mesh Delete inputs. Uh, I don't want that. Keep inputs because I want to use my Boolean for something else. And click accept. And just like that, we do have like a, a little bit of variation, you know. You can also make it to the next level. You can just add more, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a noise if you want it, right? Uh, Pump the polygons just a tiny bit, just so you can have more noise. Uh, we can do the same here. We can go here and go to Boolean. And let's try to just move it just like this. There you go. So that's our flag. All right, beautiful. So we don't need this anymore. And you will see that uh, it's, it's kind of working. It's kind of working. One thing we can do is actually remesh. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put like 1000. 1500. Let's just try with 1000. Looks like a good number to me. All right. Next, next thing, we're going to change the pivot point just to make our life easier. So we're going to go to transform. We're going to go to edit pivot. And we're going to move it here just like that. Just move it here. 
you can e either move it by hand or you can use one of these. I can use the left one just to be more precise. Click accept. And before we go into the animation process, make sure you have the material. So in my case, my material is this one. I'm going to go into the material later. But for now, I only want you to know that you need to put a texture first. So let's just put one of these textures. And uh, let's just say you like this texture, you can leave it like that. But if you don't like it, you can go to the UVs, go to transform, and you know, just move it around just like that. Let's say this is this works better for you. Then just click accept. You can use any texture you want for your flag. But anyway, this is already a very good start. I'm gonna save this. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the content browser. Press Ctrl B to find it. You can see I'm doing some tests here. So we're going to rename this to flag. All right. So right click and you will convert to skeletal mesh. If you don't have this, go to edit plugins and type skeletal. You will see that you have skeletal mesh editing tools. You can put this one. So. After that, you will restart and you will see it. Go create a skeletal mesh, convert, and now we have the SK flag. So let's go here. And the first thing first, uh, I'm going to go to the editing tools. So I need to add some bonds here. Uh, I have a root. So what I'm going to do is to actually move the root, actually control C, uh, actually going to go here, edit skeleton. I'm going to move the root just like that. I'm going to add another one here. I'm going to add one here. Click, just click here on add. Click here. And you will see that you have a joint here on the bottom of the flag. Click accept. It doesn't, re it's n doesn't really matter the position of it. Just go to bind skin. Accept. And edit weights. And you will see that the root it's it just can you can just paint it just like every, if the root is all white that's all you want the joint uh, has it's all black so that's perfect we only want the root to have our um, the mesh painting so basically that's the influence of where the animation will be taken from so the next thing it's obviously uh, adding some clothes so we already have this skeletal mesh let's close this and you can go to window, go to closing, I'll, and you will see this window here. You can just right click, create cloth from selection, click create, and you will see that nothing happened. But now when I right click again, you will see that you have applied clothing data. You can just go here. And now that's so that's all you want. Uh, now we have it. We have all the clothes. Uh, first things first, we're gonna we're gonna paint. So let's go here. Uh, there you go. Uh, activate cloth paint, and you will see that I can just paint here. Let me increase the the brush size. Not that's that's too much. Go to fifty. I will just paint here just like that. And then I, I will go to the paint value, go to something like 50. I'm going to decrease the radius to 50. I'm just going to paint like this. Just to have like a nice transition. Just go here, 75. It doesn't have to be exact, but you know. And then just go to the paint value zero. Well, what we're doing is creating a gradient. Just like that. And there you go. So now all the wind will be applied here. So that's it. Deactivate cloth paint. And you will see that it's actually working. It's actually working. So let's go here to drag our flag. Uh, you can actually put the material here. So let's go to the mesh. 
uh, let if I can find the mesh here. Not the closing mesh. Uh, let, let's, let's just put the material here. Call it flag, zero, two. And let's play to see what happens. So as you can see, like it's, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, because there's no wind, to be honest. So what you can do is go to plus here to add a new actor, go to wind, go to wind directional source and drag it there. And now what you can do is to actually play with these values here. So you can just click play. Let's just click on the wind. And let's just try like, for example, 10 speed, strength 10. You can see it's actually happening that you actually have the, the wind going on from here, right? So, it, it, you know, it, it kind of works. It, it kind of works for now, right? So if you're happy with those values, uh, I'm going to show you a really neat trick. You can just press K and K will save all the properties here. So when you stop simulating, you will see that your values are stored here. You can play with the, uh, you know, with the values and you're going to, you're going to, always you know try to let's just show the environment you can always try to play with the uh, you know with the with the collision and everything uh, the collision is like this that's why it's it's colliding here but in any case i think you should be fine like yeah, you're, you're pretty you're pretty good you're pretty good to go so that's how that's how it did these flags. I'm going to I'm going to show you how they look in game. So adding these flags is actually very good for your environment. It just adds a lot of life. It just adds uh, just so much life. You can see that without the flags it looks very very weird, but with the flags starts looking quite good so for those who are interested i'm actually offering one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for environment art if you want to step up your game work on your portfolio work on a project with me we can definitely talk about it if you are interested i put a link below where you can book a session with me and i hope to see you there